All right, here we are doing another sub CLE. Um, today we're going into the world of film, and uh, we have Graham Beck on today. Um, he, if anybody's uh, has been down to West Twenty Fifth and been to any of those bars, ABC is one of the oldest bars down there, and uh, he bartended down there for quite some time. Uh, he also uh, is into uh, making film now. So I'm kind of excited to talk about this. Graham, thanks for stopping by. Thank you. It's been a long time uh, coming. <laughs> yeah. Right? Well, you know, you had the pandemic. You had all kinds of stuff. And it's, you know, I've, I've said this before on this podcast quite, quite a few times that, like, you know, trying to get people's, like, uh, like it, schedules to align is, is very difficult to uh, plan these kind of things, you know. But tough, man. Well, yeah. I mean, we were Viking brothers. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, it's you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, you know, I was going to say, I thought you were talking about the beard. Well, that uh, too. but, <laughs> but, uh, you, you have a, you know, I'm, uh, I'm a little, um, uh, you know, um, uh, envious of your beard oh, as anybody it. with a beard should don't say it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you have the, you have the ginger with the gray, you know, I have a little bit of the salt and pepper Brown kind of gray thing, you know, I, we're doing it. Yeah. I, I yeah. like the gray. Like I, even before I got gray, I wanted, I, I couldn't wait. I, I just, I was hoping that I would get the lines, you know? <laughs> oh, did you want like the, uh, just like the, the, the one like this yeah, down here? Right, like the Wolfman Jack yeah. or something? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, it's a great <laughs> reference. That's great. <laughs> All right. So um, I, I'd like to actually, let's start with the film. I, I originally, when I asked you to do this, I, I thought, wouldn't it be great to just have um, just some of those local, those mainstays down, uh, the bartenders down on West 25th or downtown, you know, just talk about experiences like that. But I'm, I'm actually really intrigued with the film stuff that you're doing. So, um, I, a lot of these, you know, I'm talking to a lot of musicians, so I ask them how they got into music or whatever. I'm just going to go there. And how did, how did you really get into film? What made you, you know, passionate about it? Well, I mean, quite honestly, uh, like I've always loved film. Like I have music. Like yeah. you, I've played in bands galore, okay. like forever. We're gonna like, go into that too, then. That's fair. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, like when I was a kid, uh, I grew up outside of just a suburb outside of Detroit. Okay. And we had at the end of the block, there was one of the video rental houses, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, cheapo VHS for a dollar a day, sort of thing, or right. dollar a week. Me and my brother would, like, every summer rent, like, Red Dawn, Ghostbusters. <laughs> right. It was, like, the same five yeah. or ten movies yeah, yeah. Uh, every week. Yeah. And, like, I didn't think anything of it then, especially when I was growing up and trying to, like, quote, figure out what I wanted to do. Right. That never really even, like, came into, I wanted to do radio. Like, bartending was actually, like, oh, that would be kind of cool. It seems sure. fun. You know, a musician, that's yeah. the goal. But, uh yeah, quite honestly, film became a reality when I was at CSU. Okay. Uh, and they, the communication school, long before CSU even had a film school. Okay. The communication school uh, did film stuff and had kind of like a communication film track. Okay. So I kind of filtered myself into that while simultaneously avoiding math, <laughs> right. the Spanish requirement. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, that, that's one of the things, yeah, you go into the arts, you know, you can kind of sidestep all those uh, other things. But so uh, that, when did they uh, start doing film? Oh, I forget. It had to have been, so I graduated. See, it's tricky. I always try to figure out, like, yeah. when things happen. Like, yeah, yeah. In reality, I was at CSU for, like, five years. I was okay. a five-year student. Yeah. Full time. But before that, I was going, like, Taking one class here, two classes right. there. I was there for like eight years. Sure. Something like that. Sounds like me. You know, yeah, right, right. right. Yeah. You know, just trying to figure it out. Maybe. Yeah. Especially like, you know, we're in our 30s. Yeah. Like we're the higher end of the demographic when sure. it comes to college anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, yeah, it had to have been uh, maybe 2017. 
Okay. Give oh, or take really? a few years, somewhere in there, 2018. Oh, so it was like recent. And that could be very... Oh, yeah. Like, the film school is not that old oh, okay. at all. So, finally, um, I started looking at it. And what I really wanted to do, I think I was a sophomore going into my junior year, and there were talks like, oh, this film school is about to happen. Yeah. And I'm like, you know what, man? If I'm spending all this fucking money uh, on this higher education yeah like i might as well like do something i'm passionate about because yeah. i'd started as uh psychology and that lasted all of about mm. two semesters <laughs> right went into business the finance and then i realized oh i suck at math yeah so that was out and uh, i went into like journalism and then photojournalism yeah. and then finally it was just like oh. what am i doing like yeah, this yeah. is crazy yeah yeah so, yeah man so like Literally, when I found out that they were doing the film school, I'm like, that's it. I'm in. I'm all in. Okay, yeah. I mean, you know, and that's the thing. It's like, it, I, I was I was talking, to, I, I don't want to get too political here, but, you know, it just seems like there's like a big push now to like demonize like education and college and stuff like that. And I think it's a good thing, you know, and that's kind of why it should be like a little, it was probably easier back when our parents, you know, because it was so cheap. You can kind of like fumble around and figure it out, but now it's so expensive that it's like you really uh, you're forced to figure out what you're gonna do. You know? Yeah. At this point, you almost have to know exactly. Lack of a better term, you almost have to know what you want to be before you start learning right. how to be what you want to be, right. which is yeah. completely fucked up. Because yeah, like you said back in our parents' day, yeah. College was supposed to be like, you go and experiment. You yeah. learn about yourself and you right. figure out what you can't afford. Like, people can't <laughs> afford to do that now. No, no, no. It's Yeah, mm. it, yeah. it's it's definitely a different thing. I, I mean, I have my own theories. Like I said, I don't want to get too political. But, you know, it's like whenever there's a big push for the media to, like, you know, or anything, just, hey, let's let not educate the population. It can't be good. No, no, not at all. <laughs> Absolutely not. Well, and the attack, I mean, what we saw over the past, like, few years, mm -hmm. you know, to your credit and your yeah. studies, like, the, the attack on education, the attack oh, on yeah. science. Yeah. Like, yeah, the whole dangerous. Science, yeah, the whole science. And we were talking about, you know, the one thing I learned when I started, you know, because I was just so intrigued. I've, I've always been into art and music and you know, when I told people I wanted to go to school for physics, they were just like, well, why Why would you want, you've always been a good artist, a musician, this and that, whatever, a subpar musician and a, a good artist, <laughs> you know. But, you know, why, why would, and, and to me, it was just a natural progression because, you know, exploring art and music and everything like that, it was a journey and it was um, educational. It was like more of a, you know, you're, you're searching and learning more about your soul and spiritual things to me, you know, in a way, whereas like science kind of like, you know, I never really learned math in high school or anything like that. You know, uh, I would never even took algebra. I, I went right into a trade. I went into printing, you know, in high school, I was taking a vocational oh. thing, you know, so, mm -hmm. you know, I did the whole trade thing, you know, and then the internet came out and printing's not really, you know, <laughs> yeah, right. Print is dead, you know. Yeah. So, so, and then, so, you know, just um, learning about science, you know, it just made me realize that like most of my professors and, you know, they didn't have an agenda. They, they're they on a quest to search the same thing like I was doing for, with music or art, you know, look, searching for spirituality or something like that, or just, you know, ma basically trying to find that zone and that meditation, you know, mm -hmm. and, and express myself in, 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 you know, I've always said, you know, when you watch TV, too much or do anything you know people start to get anxiety and everything because they're not expressing themselves in some way you know it's just your brain you take in and you breathe out yeah same thing with your lungs you know what i mean so it's you know and if you're not expressing yourself it comes out as anxiety or stuff like that you know so right because it's, it's coming out forcefully instead of yeah. naturally right right yeah. yeah so yes exactly so so um so just, I don't know, just learning about science, uh, you know, you just come to find out that it's, it's, you know, people are just exploring and they're not, they're no, no professor I had in college was dead set on being correct. You know what I mean? They're just like, what does the data suggest and stuff like that? Right. You know? Yeah. So, and we said, obviously off camera yeah, or whatever, yeah. where it's just like, you know, you take the emotion out of it. Right. And it, you look at the facts. Absolutely. You take the emotion straight out of it. That's, yeah. 
So what I do appreciate and like love about the sciences and math is it's black and white, you know, yeah. for the most part. For the most part. For the yeah. most part. Yeah. And I love that. Like yeah. arts, it's fucking subjective. chaos, man. <laughs> yeah, it's subjective. Yeah, but for sure. It, you know, it, but okay, to go into the arts, though, you know, um, and, and this is kind of going back on to like um, what you know, your love for me, your, uh, well, your love for music and probably, uh, you know, and art and everything. I, I, I'd like to say focus on this video or the film thing. So what was it exactly like that you, what, what, when you, so when you made a film, like, what was it that you were seeing? What were you trying to portray? You know, and, and I guess, I guess I can also ask, what were your influences as far as, you know, I mean, I know you said, you know, some of the VHSs you would take back, which I can definitely identify with. Right. <laughs> which, what, what film really touched you in a way that, um, that really felt like, you know, it was a true expression of whatever the director or the writer or producer was trying to do. And what do you see yourself doing, I guess? Well, it's, yeah, that's a great question. I quite honestly, man, like, uh, I'm kind of like, you know, uh, scattered yeah. pretty much influentially. Uh, like one of the ones that comes to mind, like the first one that popped into my head was that Stranger Than Fiction. Okay. Uh, Will Ferrell, where he's, it's kind of a serious role right, for him. So seeing an actor <clears throat> tackle something artistically yeah, right, yeah. Uh, is is interesting to me. Plus the way they they did the entire thing because and now I completely forget her name, uh, <laughs> wonderful uh, English act actress. Right. I'd have to look it up. But I was gonna say, say it in the comments if everyone knows. Yeah, that. right, right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, basically, she's narrating what's going on with Will Ferrell's character, right? Okay. <clears throat> As it's happening. Okay. Only his character, while the audience can hear it, yeah, yeah. his character can hear it too. Oh, right, right. So it's kind of uh, like through audio, it's breaking the fourth wall. Yeah, yeah. Which I found astounding. I, I yeah. To that point, I'd never actually heard somebody do that before, and okay. I'm sure somebody had because sure. this film isn't that old. But Right, no, yeah. But, like, yeah, hearing, hearing that and seeing how they did it, she's narrating basically the demise of Will Ferrell's character as a character in her book. Okay. She's an author and every one of her characters dies at the end. So now he's trying to find oh. her to not to make sure she doesn't kill him kill at the him, end yeah. of her book. It's <laughs> it was such a cool idea and like yeah. this is obviously I mean growing up I watched a ton of horror movies. Sure. I was you know uh uh Night of the Living Dead, all oh, the all yeah. the you know Day of the Dead and Sam Raimi. And oh, all, all the yeah. same, every yeah. single Evil Dead, anything <laughs> yeah. Bruce Campbell touched. Right, like, yeah. That those that was my wheelhouse. But like, <clears throat> you know, I started seeing movies like Pie yeah. in high school and uh, Pie. You know, well, I'm sorry, I don't Pie know. was um. Oh man, I'm yeah. blowing the references. See, this yeah. is the one thing about me. Like, yeah. what I've noticed about film people is they can drop a name at at in. Yeah. Drop a drop of a hat. Right, right. I can't remember shit. No, hey, you're <laughs> yeah. with me. You're with me. But you get the general idea. Yeah, of for sure. But know? like Pi was um Oh, was that the one with the the, the is... boat and the lion? No. No. Sorry, no. What was that? <laughs> that was Life of Pi. Oh, yeah. okay. See that All I right. do remember. Yeah, no, yeah. Pi was a nineties experimental it's kind of a big name director. Put it in the comments, people. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah. But basically, like it's it's all about mathematics, okay. and uh, this guy is starting to figure out, you know, the the something about like the meaning of life through mathematics. But like this Jewish cult gang comes after him because he's starting to get close. It's supposed to be, and it's very experimental. But yeah. like I remember going to see that. There was a, a, a art house movie theater not too far from where I grew up called the Main Art Theater. It's gone okay. now, unfortunately. But yeah. I couldn't tell you how many times I saw that movie there. Okay. Yeah, so it's just growing up with that, like Run Lola Run was another big one. Okay. Uh, the actress that was in the first uh, Born Identity movie. Okay. Oh, yeah, She yeah, was the yeah, lead yeah, in that yeah. one. 
Oh yeah, and then uh, you know, because I I've never seen those Born Identity. It's just funny you say that because I just watched them last week, like all of them. Oh, did you? Yeah, and I I thought it was interesting that they killed her off in the well. Spoiler. Spoiler. Yeah. I mean, if you haven't seen it by now, I mean, come on. Right. Yeah. It's like giving away the ending to Citizen Kane. It, right. Like, if you haven't watched it by now, you're not going to. Like, yeah. get over it. Yeah. But, um, no, yeah. I thought it was interesting they killed her off. Of that. But, yeah, she, I, and I, because it was interesting because I looked her up. I don't know why, you know, because now it's like every time you watch a movie, you just are sidetracked and you get on your second second screen and just right. look, look everything up, you know? IMDb for days. Yeah. I'm not going to lie to you. Like, <laughs> yeah. I got into a habit, like, I don't know, 10 years ago where, like, uh, I'd watch a movie and then immediately IMDb the trivia. Yeah. Oh, behind yeah. Behind all, like, yeah, little yeah. nuance. And see, I love that. I know. I love yeah. hearing about that stuff. And, and that, yeah, that is definitely interesting. And, you know, obviously I'm doing a little bit of film here, you know. Yeah, uh, it's definitely not. which <laughs> totally news to me. I knew about the podcast. I didn't know the YouTube had existed. Oh yeah, I can't wait to go back. I'm not gonna lie to you. My favorite episode is Tony yeah. Urba. Oh, Big uh, Daddy you Urba and everyone else. Yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> I mean, that dude's got stories for days. Man. Oh my god, he's he's so good. And yeah, I just saw him uh, over at the Clutch Show. He was over there. Oh, was he over there? Yeah, I didn't see yeah. him. Yeah. Tony, yeah, Tony Urba. Like when I posted that <laughs> one, I mean, it's amazing how many people love that guy. <laughs> just you know, he's a good dude. Yeah, he's yeah. a shit bag, but he's a good yeah. dude. Yeah, you know? I mean that was I my first time meeting him. He'll say it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, he's 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 great. He's a really good, really good dude for uh, sure. Okay, so all right, so just getting back into this movie. So that, that mm-hmm. that's your your inspiration is kind of all over there. Whatever. Um, have you like have you written a script or anything like that? I've yeah. gone. I yeah, I've dabbled with the screenwriting. Okay. I really love the idea, but. Unless you have the money to take the time to screenwrite, right. at least in my experience. Yeah. I mean, you know, I've heard the stories where the Coen brothers wrote a script in like a weekend. It's like, okay, well, not everybody can figure that out. Right. <laughs> but like, yeah, I love I love the idea of screenwriting. I hope one day to like do more with it. Right. I've got one that I'm thinking about uh, based on the uh, life and career and social impact of uh, Step and Fetch It, who I'm is an old vaudeville, um, came through the vaudeville circuit. He was okay. the first uh, African-American uh, star oh, wow. in Hollywood. Uh, there's What's funny about his life is it's it's kind of a mystery. It's yeah. like you don't know what's fact and what's not because he he would – he gained notoriety so quick. Yeah. And use that to his benefit as a black man yeah. in a white world and made sure people treated him like his white counterpart. Okay. Yeah. And I think socially and culturally right now, that story is so important. Sure. Uh, so I've just been, I've been reading a handful of books. There's not much out there about him at all. Yeah, that's interesting. This whole, um, you know, I remember, you know, I'm a Gen Xer. I'm sure, same, probably, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, we're, we got to be the same age. Uh, yeah, forty three. Uh, no, I'll well, say I'm it. older than you. Let's put it that way. I'm forty seven. <laughs> ah, um, no, that's not bad. Yeah, yeah, it's not bad yet. No, I'm still <laughs> under fifty, right? No, but um, yeah, and I, I just, you know, I always thought that, like, growing up, I'm like. Oh, that's just our parents that were racist and everything, you know. And it's like, right. you know, and then I'm like, as soon as like mm-hmm. I'm like forty or something, that's just gonna be gone, right? You know, it, yeah, and it's not. It's not. <laughs> and you know, it's funny. I mean, well, it's, it's not, less. It's less. You know what I mean? Well, you know? it's not though. That's yeah. the problem. Is right. is, and I was gonna say it's funny, and it's not funny. It's poignant the fact that now that. You know, I've always joked about the fact that everybody's got a camera. Everybody's filming everything. Yeah. And quite honestly, it's it's shown more of the disgusting underbelly of America mm-hmm. in the past 20 years yeah. that you and me both, where it's just right. like, oh, it's not that bad. It's blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, it's actually way well, worse. Well, you know, what really got me was I, I did some, you know, I, I worked, uh, I was doing some work uh, for like four months down in uh panhandle of florida and oh my aunt lives down there oh, okay that's crazy yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah sorry <laughs> yeah um no and it, it was just interesting like spending some time in alabama and stuff like that you know and i remember talking to a co-worker and you know he was black and i was like hey you want to go out here and he had already been working there for like a few months 
And he's like, I don't know if I can go there, you know, or whatever. And I'm like, why, you know? And it's just weird because, like, you know, the racism, if you're, if you've grown and were grown and raised up north here, it's like everyone that's racist kind of like keeps it secret. Or at least they don't even see themselves as racist. Right. They you know don't think I mean? there's anything wrong, which yeah. is even more wild. Yeah. And then going down there and just experiencing, you know, because I'm white, so I'm talking to other white people and just, I'm like, they're not even hiding it. I mean, no. you see signs for KKK and this and that and everything. It's crazy. Brutal. So, man. yeah, it, it's just such a different world <clears throat> down there um, that I've noticed. And, and yeah, I just... And because this guy I was talking to, he's from New York, you know, born and raised, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's like, yeah, you know, you kind of get some racist stuff here and there, but nothing like nothing like down south. You know, it's a totally right. different world. Right. And it's, you know? it's 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 interesting to think like like you said, where yeah. you would think as a society, we would be able to evolve out of that right. thinking Man, you get past that Mason Dixon line, yeah. man. Like, oh, yeah. Shit hasn't changed no, at all, yeah, which it, is scary. It is. Especially politi- and this is obviously taking a weird turn, sure, but like yeah, but, but politically, man, like it's dangerous now. It's yeah. so dangerous because yeah. you see video after video, like that shit in uh, New York with oh, that yeah. ex Marine that choked yeah. out that yeah. uh uh Yeah, yeah. On the yeah, subway I'm or whatever. Yeah. yeah. But Neely you know or whatever. What I'm yeah. Yeah, Neely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Yeah. Neely. Yeah. And uh like, my guy got questioned and released. Like, are you fucking serious? Like, because if the shoe was on the other foot, that yeah. wouldn't happen at all. Sure. Yeah. You know, um, but yeah, and, and to your point, though, it's, you know, a lot of the thing is, you know, I guess when I was younger, you know, we did everyone didn't have iPhones and everything. And, and right. And, well, I'm going to say Android because I have an Android, but everyone didn't have these smartphones. And. And the, you didn't. Now it's like you see more of it just because it's being filmed more, right? You know what I mean. Right. And I guess so. What you're saying is like you know the 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 vaudeville gentleman, you know that that's kind of like an inspiration that you'd some you'd like to. Kinda, I think it's important. Yeah. I think it's very important. Uh, only because it's very telling how he tried to use his stardom because he yeah. got famous by. Uh, portraying a stereotype right back then like yeah. slow lazy it was like a, a thing yeah. that like you know if you were a black actor back then you're either a maid or a farmhand like, right like legit you know yeah, so but he, I mean, he leaned into it yeah he leaned into it to he the, got notoriety he had power and he used it right but he also got uh ostracized by like organizations like the uh, NAACP. Right, I was going to say, yeah. You know, they they didn't appreciate what he was doing. A lot of people didn't understand what he was doing. Right. You know, and it's it's a very interesting line, I so, think. But is it like the whole, like, art imitates life thing where it's like, you know, he's portraying that because that's how it was, you know? It's like you, yeah. you really didn't, I mean, there wasn't a black president at the time, you know, so you couldn't right. really do a biopic on that or anything like that, you know? Yeah, and you're absolutely right because he's come out and said things like, you know, I was just, you know, I was doing a thing, but I was doing it well, but here's why I was doing it. Right. It's like if I was going to get a leg up and, you know, meet the white man eye to eye, right? he's like, this is what I did to get there. And then when yeah, I yeah. got there, I used that to help, you know, right. and like feed it back into helping everybody else. Okay. So to speak. You know. So it was it was it's an interesting story. Yeah. yeah. So is so that's something that you, is that something that you'd like to do a screenplay with yes. or something? Yeah. yeah. 100%. Are you working on it? I am. Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Um yeah, cuz that's that does sound interesting. You know, and it it kind of puts a you know, so okay, so so you're kind of interested in like exposing like sociological kind of like enlightening you know, and that's basically what I remember. There was a literature teacher, uh, professor that I I had one time where they were saying the um, difference between comedy and tragedy is is tragedy. Comedy is like pointing out the flaws of society, where tragedy is pointing out the flaws of a single person. Mm. You know. Oh, okay. And I I yeah. thought you know I thought that was interesting. So like something like that could definitely be like a comedic tragedy or a tragic comedy or something. Like yeah. That, I mean, the know? line is so blurred. Yeah. 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 
that's that's interesting <laughs> to think about. Okay, so so what was like? So you went to CSU and got your you know uh, degree from there. Now, were you working on right before you graduated? I'm, I know you have to do some kind of uh, um, oh, like a thesis, thesis or yeah. something like that. What did what was that? Yeah, uh, I was trying to get. So I was senior year. I got approached by uh, my friend and colleague, yeah. uh, Sean Ford. Okay. Uh, big mixologist. He he has a claim to fame. He was on a ton of uh, Bar Rescue episodes. Oh, really? As okay. like the master mixologist. You oh, know? nice. And we bonded through that because he worked. He's been in, in and out of every cocktail. Yeah. He also like consults on like opening Hilton and like you know bar programs across the country. Right. Um, and he approached me about the show. Um, I won't get too much into detail, but yeah. uh, it's basically a mixology competition show. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, so I was trying to get that to be my thesis because we shot yeah. a we shot a pilot. Yeah. Did it over at a society on East Fourth. Oh, uh, nice. Used I I was able to hire um, some of my professors. Yeah. Oh, uh, nice. A lot of my fellow students. Oh, that's cool. <clears throat> as a producer. Yeah. And then we were able to access CSU's like you know allotment of cameras and lights. Oh, and all nice. that. that's gonna so be awesome. That worked out. We flew in some people from a uh, bar rescue, and uh, CSU shut me down on that. They're like, no, you got to do something new. <laughs> like, what do you mean new? Like right, right. Because technically, I had shot that before the thesis came oh, up, so they're like, "I understand." No, you gotta. And I'm like, I don't think you understand what I did. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. It's not groundbreaking, but like I incorporated CSU. Like you can hang your yeah, hat on a little yeah, bit of this. Yeah. You know, that's that's kind of you know because I um I I'm pr- I'm pretty sure I did the same um research paper like all four five. Maybe it was five years. Uh, I was in CSU. Uh, well, actually, no. I was in CSU only for two or three years because I did a lot of the prereqs over at uh, Tri-C. Tri-C, yeah. Um, which I think the greatest thing in the world is their mascot is now a Triceratops, which I think is the greatest. Is it really? Yeah. It's, uh, it's awesome, yeah. Finally. Somebody gets it right. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, but, yeah, um, I just remember, like, you know, I had to do this final, like, research or whatever, you know, and it was basically a culmination with an addition to basically every research paper. It was about like food deserts and in, in in the city and oh, stuff wow. like that. So like, yeah, I mean, so if you want to know anything about like food distribution and food deserts and the way Cleveland's set up, uh, I pretty much know anything about. <laughs> or you know, and then just installing like green space and. Um, having green roofs and stuff like that and just trying to make like urban deserts like not like a thing, you know, and more mm-hmm. uh, the urban heat islands, you know, because in, yeah. in more urban areas that they, 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 the albedo and everything like that. I'm not going to get into that stuff, you know, <laughs> but it's just kind of funny because it, I felt like I just kind of ripped myself off of all the research I did the whole time. And here they wouldn't even let you just do that. Thing, yeah. You know? Well, I mean, wait, hey, whatever. <laughs> It is what it is. So, so what'd you end up doing? So I did. Uh, I'm uh, working at ABC. Yeah, uh, I got to know a lot of the uh, graffiti writers in oh, town because okay. for a little while, like a lot of them would come in almost every other night. Yeah. So it was kind of cool, and it, it really piqued my interest. Um, just seeing all like the cool artwork around town. Yeah. And uh, that with like the uh, basically just the the worldwide movement, anyways. Um, yeah, it just, I wanted to just do like an overview. Yeah. So I did, uh, this out for fame documentary, which I wanted, wanted to do a full length documentary on it. It just wound up becoming kind of more of a, they call it a poetic documentary. Okay. So it's just more of a, yeah, it's on my Vimeo. It's like, uh, more of an overview of just graffiti and what it is. And, uh, my buddy, who I used to work with in Detroit at a record store, yeah. uh, Todd Heller, <clears throat> great guy, uh, born and raised in New York. I think he's living just outside of LA now. Okay. Had him give me, I just wanted people's opinions, you yeah. know, like, what do you think graffiti is? What is it to you? What, when you right. see it, what is, what does that make you feel? So I got audio from him. I got audio from a few other people. Um, I'm not gonna lie to you. I snagged a, uh, interview 
uh, KRS One did after one of his shows, and he okay. he talks and explicitly about what graffiti is, okay. and where it came from, and that's one of the most educated men on yeah. the face of this planet. Oh yeah, KRS One. Yeah, yeah, he goes sure. into like, you know, graffiti started with like Egyptians spitting berry juice on the wall <laughs> and like putting their handprints on the wall. Oh, like that's okay. that's graffiti. Yeah, that's yeah. that's what graffiti is. Yeah. Or is it? But, yeah. You know, so that that was kind of like the concept. I'm sure Banksy was uh, mentioned at some point. Oh um, yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> with Kara's one, yeah. Or with any, I don't know. This whole yeah, thing. yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Um, okay, so, so, so you say you can find that on your what? Oh, my uh, Vimeo page. Okay, so what is that? It's uh, Vimeo's kind of like YouTube for. Filmmakers. No, I know what Vim- Vimeo oh. is. I'm saying, <laughs> I what's was like, your Vimeo oh, really? page called? <laughs> <laughs> it's under uh, Fierce Beard Films. Okay, Fierce Beard Films. So that's what you're, you you have a website too, or no, just Vimeo. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to spend the uh, the extra yeah, money for right. a separate website when you can just go to the Vimeo. Yeah, oh. and then well, that brings me. So where can you see that other film about the at the Society Lounge or whatever? Oh, that one. Uh, well, it's still kind of in in okay. the air. Yeah, so. Yeah. You guys in your film stuff, you guys really like out there. do all this stuff and just kind of sit on it and I hate it. try to shop I it around and stuff. Hate it. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I hate it because I'm going to like show people like, oh, yeah. lay on like this. Because I always get people asking like, what are you working on? Yeah, and I'm like, yeah. well, this is what I'm working on. I can vaguely tell you about it. And they're like, cool. Yeah. Can I see it? I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I'd like to know more about, the, you know, because I'm actually really intrigued with, uh, you know, video and filming and stuff like that. So like Dude, you got the gear. Well, you have the yeah. gear. This is awesome. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Yeah. Well, the thing is, I I was a little nervous. I was like, man, this guy, God does this shit, man. He's gonna come over here and like pick no. this stuff apart, man. <laughs> Here's what I'm gonna tell you about that. Yeah. Uh, gearheads are gearheads. Yeah. You know, I learned about people being gearheads when I was yeah. a musician. Yeah. I was never. I've never been a gearhead. I can't right. keep up with it. I don't research it enough. I don't read about it enough. I don't get my hands on it enough. I'd like to say I totally agree with you. Um, when I because with music, the guitar is an instrument. I only need one Phillips head screwdriver. I only need one. You know what I mean? <laughs> right, but you right. know what I mean? Right. So I yeah, I was never a gear guy. I was like, hey, I have a guitar and an amp. Good enough. Yeah. You know? Cool. Right. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely, man. So. Yeah. Yeah, so when it comes to, like, shooting stuff, uh, yeah. I'm more, at this point, like, more an acting producer because I feel like my commodity is, like, the relationships I build. Okay. You know, so, like... Um, I'm sure a lot of that comes from bartending, you know. It helps. People skills. Yeah, people skills is huge, man. Yeah. In any industry, especially sure. this one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I remember I was bartending uh, at one point, and some guy comes, like, he owns some big science for him. he's like so what are you doing is this all you do whatever i don't know everyone wants to talk to you you know and i'm like no nah, you know i'm going to school for you know physics at the time is what it was and he's like oh you know i own a company you know i've worked at a fancy restaurant I don't know, or a fancy bar would you work hotel. i know and come I on tell me it. it's the ritz carlton so oh yeah yeah so <laughs> yeah it's was, it was, it was pretty good money yeah man but no you meet some really interesting people too absolutely but he he thought it was interesting that I was going to school for science because he's like, man, you are just so like personable and you know, you, your people skills are great. He's like, I walk into the, the engineering or the science department. He's like, those guys just can't seem to put a sentence together. They're just so shy or whatever. You know what I mean? You know? Right. So yeah. You're the dual threat, man. <laughs> right. Yeah. He said, he was like, man, people probably need, there's a use for you to just be that in between guy between right. like the executives and the you know whatever you know? right right you know both sides so you can like <laughs> easily go back and forth. Yeah. And here I am just talking to people, but <laughs> so, so uh, continue. I don't know what you're saying? I'm sorry. You know, you were. Oh, I don't know. Oh, oh. What, were, what were you saying? I was talking about your gear. That's kind of where oh, we left yeah. off at. <laughs> um, no, yeah. So I, I'm I'm just in, in, intrigued with like the whole production of it. So like, what were you doing like for for that? Uh, for that society lounge thing or whatever, I, I don't even know exactly. So it's it, what exactly? So society how lounge. How did you put that? How did you start that? Uh, it like any good idea. And was that your first? That was my first first like, major 
Okay, but like you did production. Like, you did like I did a couple things. of shorts films and yeah, I did. Tell me your. I want to know your very first one. The very first yeah, one. Yeah. Oh, it's horribly embarrassing. I it's know. It's a great story, but it's so <laughs> terrible. But it was so much fun. Like yeah. I don't even hate it that much. Like yeah, yeah. I, I talked to a lot of film people who have like accomplished so much. Like I mean, look at James Gunn. Look at some of that crazy stuff he put out. So now where is he now? You know. Right. Right. Well, I mean, <laughs> even locally, like the Pruntees, like yeah, they put out nothing but solid gold. They yeah. have a, a studio called Black Valve. Okay. They're phenomenal. Those guys. Yeah. Outstanding. I don't know, and I'm sure they have a couple of like hidden tapes just yeah. you know, for reminiscing, but like yeah, my hidden tape is uh it's called a Canadian and uh my buddy Eric Williams back home. So I'd moved to Cleveland around two thousand nine, twenty ten, something like okay, that. Okay, from Detroit. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And I I'd moved, I was living at my buddy and bandmate uh Al Mercer. His house, okay, because he had moved in with his then girlfriend, whatever. Um, yeah, so I was living at his house, moved to Cleveland, <clears throat> and the house was empty. Eric hits me up and he's like, "Yo, have you ever heard of this forty-eight hour film fest?" I'm like, "Ah, uh, no." <laughs> yeah, he's like, "We should do it," because Eric was into film and wanted to do this, and I'm like, "Yeah, yeah let's let's go, man. It sounds cool." Right. So kind of get the gist of it. And for those who don't know, 48 hour film fest is like, basically you, you, you go to this event, the, the fest gives you, I don't know, three components that you have to work into your script and shoot. Oh, wow. So they give you like a line you have to say, they give you like a, a overall genre. And there's one other one. I forget what it was. That's really cool. It's kind of fun, man. It's, it's kind it's of like cool. that, that Beachland, uh, the... Oh, the the um, <laughs> Lottery League. Yes. Yeah, which yeah. I've been in multiple. Okay. Those were We're going to so get fun. back into the music here. But oh, yeah, that was, okay. was so much fun. But like, <laughs> so he, I, he's like, what do you think? You want to do this? I'm like, yeah, man. So I, I drove back up for the weekend, Friday night, go to this event, and uh, we have our little team uh, of degenerates yeah <laughs> and uh you know we get all of our information we go back uh my parents still live in the same house i grew up in in berkeley okay and uh so we all pile over there we get a couple of pizzas Wait, berkeley an insane amount of beer yeah there's a berkeley michigan okay i thought you meant berkeley california yeah right no, okay. no. berkeley right. michigan is like uh <laughs> did i miss something a dime like little okay. speck in america okay um about like 10, 15 minutes north of Detroit. Okay. But uh, yeah, man, so we all pile in and we start writing the script and we're all thrown. There was like eight of us in the room, 10 of us in the room, which is, in my opinion, too many people. Yeah. And we're just getting loaded. Yeah. And we're throwing all these ideas on. It's like, oh, what if like, you know, there's this Canadian and he's an illegal alien and like these agents come to try and find him and blah, blah, blah. So it's <laughs> ridiculous. So we all start passing out. People start going home. My buddy Eric stayed over. <clears throat> and then in the morning I wake up and Eric is finishing the script. He's like, I think I got it. It's like, oh, okay, nice. cool. So now uh, most of us are hung over. I'm yeah. sick as hell. Yeah. And the one guy I tried to get into this movie, uh, his name's, G he goes by Jimmy Doom. Okay. He was in the Kill the Irishman. Oh, really? He was, like, the main oh, nice. biker dude. Like, oh, no shit. Like, Detroit local legend. This nice. guy was great. And uh, I talked to him the night before, and I'm like, dude, we're going to do this little short. What do you think about coming over? I'll pay you in beer. And he's like, yeah. yeah, yeah, I'll see if I can make it. He couldn't make it. Yeah. So now I'm hungover. I'm trying to put this thing together, and everybody's looking at me like, you know you have to do this, right? I had no intention of acting in this thing. Oh, wow. And I use acting very loosely, <laughs> you know, to respect to actual actors. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we shoot this thing all day Saturday, clip it together Saturday night, uh, turn it in Sunday, and then wow. That's it's, amazing. it's ridiculous. So you had to film everything and edit it. and 48 just, hours, baby, and that's all that's you get. Amazing. And, and it's got to be like it? like two to five minutes somewhere in there. Oh, okay. Something like that. And then, you know, locally they, they pick a theater and you go sit in a movie theater and they show it. That's cool. It's like the equivalent of uh, going to like the Capitol. Cleveland has, I mean, it's all yeah. over the, the, the world, I think at this point. What do you mean? The 48 hour film fest. Oh, so Cleveland's there's one in Cleveland? One. Oh yeah. yeah. 
And now they've even branched off. There's like a horror version, and like you uh, know, so they do. All so it's cool. Yeah, yeah, like that. That's cool. Yeah, it's that's fun. a whole world I don't know about. You know, just something fun. I, I yeah. almost feel like it's a uh, an exercise in organization. <laughs> well, sure. No, and it, it, you know, yeah, like the lottery league for uh, like you know at the. I, I think that is such a great idea. You know, just you know, because I've always said like Rock and Roll City Studios. You know, just mm-hmm. being down there and just being around like-minded people and it was like a community and just meeting other people and interacting and and it just it's it it breeds creativity it breeds different ideas you know yeah and i i think something like that like i've never even heard of that before and i think that's amazing you know that's really cool so how did you guys do like with that did the lottery you, league yeah or no the, the oh the what, 40 yeah, yeah we didn't win anything yeah i don't know we i me and like uh, one other guy. Oh, Al. Yeah. Al Mercer. Uh, he played the uh, the Uper, which is like okay. uh, Michigan speak for people who live close to like Wisconsin and in the Upper Peninsula. Okay. They talk with that accent. I can't do it. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's like a more exaggerated. I've I've been out to California. I've worked out in California for like about a year or whatever, and you know everyone's like, "Are you from Ohio?" You know, just from hearing me, you know, and I'm like, really You're like, that's yeah, crazy. <laughs> and I, there's some people watching this right now. Like, oh, yeah, definitely. Of course. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. <laughs> but, but yeah. So, I mean, it was fun. It was a cool experience. I don't regret it. No, nice. it's funny. I just sent the, uh, every once in a while it comes up and I send it to people. Yeah. But I watch it first. I'm like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> so what is the one here in Cleveland? Like what? What's it called? Do you know? It's just or? there. I if, as far as I know, that was the one and only one I've done. Okay. But it, for the longest time, I was getting emails and updates and stuff. It's okay. just forty eight hour film fest. It's yeah. just pretty sure it's worldwide at this point. That's pretty cool, man. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. So okay. So that's the first thing you did, whatever, and then worked on a handful of things after. Yeah. That, so I did like a couple of shorts uh, when I was yeah. in college, just trying to figure it out. And yeah. Did one actually about my girlfriend, uh, okay. Katie, <clears throat> and uh, uh, if you guys she, don't know, they're probably the cutest ginger. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she uh, uh, the BRCA gene runs in her family, which is like uh, very uh, cancer causing gene. Oh, okay. Um, her mom went through it. Her grandmother went through it. So I did like a little short on her, and she okay. got diagnosed with it, and oh, wow. she dealt with it, and she wound up actually getting breast cancer after it oh boy thank god she beat it good uh clean and healthy awesome. since then so i did one on that and my buddy uh also abc uh buddy johnny walker white yeah jww yeah uh it's still over there basically running the place at this good. point i did yeah. one on him he has been doing like this very secretive art project and i'm gonna let the the cat out of the bag hopefully yeah yeah where like he gets maps of like in like uh historic events yeah. whether it be like um think of like a serial killer in their killing spree and like where all their victims are or like um i don't know like a fish con like a fish yeah. tour and like all the cities yeah. they hit <clears throat> he'll plot out the the map points on a canvas and then like tie those with string with paint like oh. slap paint and kind of see what kind of shape it makes and like and Corey, it's, a, it's such a cool idea he's been doing it for yeah. a while um and i kind of hope he does more you know out in the open with it yeah yeah because uh, it's a very cool idea nice um so i did a short on that like just his process and stuff that's cool and that led into the graffiti documentary and then uh yeah, and then uh, my colleague and former professor, John Vorlis, uh-huh. over at uh, CSU, <clears throat> one day, I think it was like a junior going into senior year, and he we were getting to talking about what we were working on, and he's like, yeah, I started working on this documentary. Yeah. It's about the housing crash 2008 and what it did to Cleveland, and more specifically what it did to the, the neighborhood of Slavic Village. So that led into... Um, my uh, now colleague and uh, professor at the time, CSU. Okay. Uh, he, in my like junior year, I was editing some of I'm my- A little closer, yeah. Yeah, if you don't mind. 
Hey, right. try not to knock anything. Hey, no, right. Whoops. <laughs> flimsy ass <laughs> tables over here i know right <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah he was like asked me what i was working on and he had a couple students kind of helping him out he had like no budget for this thing yeah and it was a full-length documentary right about uh the housing crash and what it did to cleveland and more specifically what it did to slavic village and he's like hey would you mind like taking a look at this you know if you want to take a crack at editing and organizing yeah. and uh, I was like, I would love to. I mean, at the time, I'm like, yeah, I want to get my hands on whatever I can. Right. Um, so, yeah, so I, I I took a look at it. He gave me the drive with all the footage, and it was like an insane amount of footage, so many interviews. And, uh, yeah, like, quite honestly, I've been working on that documentary since college. <laughs> So and well, we just wrapped it up last, like probably about this time last year. Okay, so I'm not, I'm not, so if without giving too much away, I guess you know whatever. But mm-hmm. what actually, what was the housing crisis that happened in Slavic Village? I, I mean, what well, was the same one, 2008, when yeah. the, the the housing crash happened? Okay, uh, it obviously wreaked havoc across the world. Yeah, but it, places like Slavic Village, where they were already fighting to like you know, stay afloat. Right. It was like the housing crash was the foot that just pushed him under the water. Okay. Held him there. So it was basically, I see. Cause, Cause then all of a sudden, you know, you're dealing with, um, the, the housing cra- crisis basically stemmed from, you know, among other things. And I'm no expert on this. At yeah. All, right. And I don't claim to be right. But, right. You know, basically it was like fraudulent, um, mortgages, uh, right. Inflated mortgages. Right. Created the bubble. Right, right, right. Uh, unsustainable loans uh, being granted to people who could not afford right. to pay those loans. And then they were offering them these loans that were like low payments at first, but then they would balloon up yeah. to like something crazy and then they would lose their houses. Well, it was basically a scheme. Those those loans would be then packaged and sold to other entities. So right. Or, you know, if you own this house with like, Bank of America, right? Packaged it up and sold it to uh, First Federal and then right. Third, whatever. You know, yeah. There's part of the film where it's like some of the people we interviewed, they didn't even know who owned their loan. At this right. Date. They were sending, oh, right. They were sending payments in, and they don't even know if they're paying the right people at this point. Well, my my well, what when I had a mortgage at, at one point, um, it, I think it changed hands three times yeah. until it got to Bank of America. Yeah, right. It's yeah, so yeah. It's like, and then it was like too big to fail. Yeah, yeah. And that's what they said, man. <laughs> if a bank is too big to fail, that means it's too big. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, right. yeah. So, yeah, so he brought me on just kind of like an assistant editor. Yeah. Um, I helped kind of organize the files in, in the software that we were using. Okay. And I started putting together some more stuff and clipping some more stuff. And I was working okay. with this other, like, amazing uh editor in town josh lawhorn uh he works for another uh, flex uh they're they're a company in cleveland they're a, a videographer yeah uh company flex i'm not horribly familiar but uh, josh does amazing work yeah <clears throat> but he was getting this job and like the the film got to be too much so i kind of took over okay and then between me and john man we just pieced it together and ran with it with no budget and uh you know, uh, then the pandemic happened and we had to pretty much stop working for an entire year. Yeah. And then, uh, we wrapped it up over like zoom and, you know, distant calls. Right. And, right. You know, yeah. And then now it's, it's gotten into a few festivals and right. Nice. Proud of that. Yeah. Cool. And um, now we're, we're kind of thinking about like doing, we were approached by a couple of producers about doing one on the history of the x-ray. Which is really, very, very interesting. Very that does sound intriguing. interesting. Yeah, I mean that's kind of right up your alley, a little well, bit science wise. Oh, I remember. Li- yeah, I remember listening to a podcast about um, MRI, mm. and that was just fascinating. I didn't know. Yeah, I mean it. That's a incredible technology. A lot of computer, uh, you know, a little computer stuff and like figuring things out. And I mean, because you're basically taking like a magnetic resonance image so it's like taking these 
I don't even know. I'm, I'm not even going to get it. But like they, they did this whole podcast explaining that, like about how like they can measure the magnetic stuff and then they can like do some kind of mathematics and then turn it into an image. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's yeah, crazy. It's wild. It's like the yeah. matrix at work. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. It's really, really, really cool. Okay. So that is at the most, is that the, is that where we're at? Like, what I'm doing now. Yeah. Like, that's, yeah. yeah I've, I've, you know, since then, while I was working on the documentary, uh, I got into locations. Uh, there's uh, another fella uh, locally named Matthew T. Okay. He was like the locations master, him and Bill Garvey. Okay. <clears throat> in town of Matthew T., I think, without putting words in his mouth, I'm, I get the feeling he lost a taste for Hollywood. You know, he's got a, a private gig now doing what he's doing. Okay. He's doing great. Like, I envy him. He's he's living the dream. Yeah, yeah. He came into one of my classes at CSU and talked about the business and getting into locations. Yeah. And I come from, in Detroit, I was a warehouse worker and manager for over a decade. Yeah. 12, 15 years. So it's a lot of logistics and planning and, you know, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> and he comes in and he's talking and it's funny listening to him talk because like he'll tell you he'll tell you straight you know like yeah. what is and what's not you know yeah yeah so i appreciated that and he's talking about location so i talked to him after the class i'm like dude like this sound i didn't nobody knows what locations is you always hear about directors and you know grips and the best boy. Everybody right, right. The right, best right. boy. I do love that one. I still don't know yeah. what he does. But yeah, right. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. Like, I do, and then sometimes I don't. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but he, I'm like, locations. Like, what exactly? So I, I held him up for, like, another 40 minutes telling me all about location. Okay. And it's, you know, there's, in my opinion, there's an artistic side to it where, like, you know, you always hear about, like, location scouting, scouting for movies. Right. Where you get the script and you go out with the director or producer or whoever. And right. Based on the script and the the artistic vision, you go and try and find these places that represents what's on paper. Right. And that's the artistic side. And then the uh, logistic side is trying to make it all work. Where sure. You fit, you know, 100, 200, 300 people in a production. Yeah. And, you know. Okay, we know where we're shooting, but like, where are all the bathrooms? Who's catering it? Where are we putting everybody when they're right, not working? Right, where right. are the trucks going? You know, something an artist is going to know nothing about. You something know? an artist doesn't <laughs> want to know anything. Right. About. Yeah. <laughs> right. And it's you know, it, it just became one of those things where it's like, I've got the background. I'm not, I'm not stepping into this thinking I know everything, but like, yeah. maybe I have a little bit of a leg up. Yeah. And come to find out, nobody wants to work in locations, so it's like, okay, fill the void. So oh, nice. cool. Bill Garvey, who is now the film uh, commission president, okay, and uh, doing amazing work with Mike Went over there, uh, gave me my first job on White Noise. Okay, which was that Netflix movie that uh, came out probably about a year ago at this point, somewhere around there. It's the okay. Adam Driver movie. <clears throat> it's based on the um, uh, uh, I forget the author. Okay. Name. It's it's a heady book. I'm not gonna lie to you. Okay, so yeah, you because know, when I was working over at the Ritz Carlton, I said it. Okay, finally said where I work. Okay, <laughs> uh, well, I don't work there currently, but um, they Netflix was in town a lot, doing a lot of movies, yep. so they would stay there, mm -hmm. and uh, I got to meet like you know uh, the uh, oh god, what was the one girl? Uh, she has a sister, and then whatever, and. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Names are awful. Yeah, to I'm me. not gonna lie to you. Like, but uh, some Hollywood famous person. Drama, yeah. But, oh, Fanning. Uh, uh, da Dakota. Da not Dakota, no. but her sister she was has here. A sister. She was here filming Ellie Fanning. I think maybe. I don't sure. know. Whatever. They were down in the lounge like every day, and the director and you know the lesser Fanning. Yeah. Right. Well, I think she's the more the more Fanning. Oh, is she now. Really? I think okay. I don't. I don't. I don't, dude, I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, dude, I am so awful with this stuff. But um, but it was interesting because like it seemed like they were in town quite a bit, you know. And I talked to quite a few Netflix people, and so I don't know. Is that yeah. is that one of the movies that was filmed here? Or? Uh, I'm assuming. Okay. I, I don't know if she was in that or not. No, I mean just like it was a Netflix movie that was filmed here. 
Because you said White Noise. It was yeah, White Netflix. Noise was yeah. the, the Netflix movie. Was it filmed here, though? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, so yeah. that's one of them. Okay. So, and then, yeah, and then there was like a, there's a bunch of movies filmed here, you know. And Oh, I mean, uh, Captain, uh, uh, or the the Avengers was like one of the big yeah, ones. Yeah, movies, yeah, so yeah, say, yeah. That, that's kind of funny, actually, because my first job in Cleveland when I moved here uh, was working the VIP room. I was the manager of the VIP room of the Brown Stadium. Okay. Like season ticket holders, you nice. upgrade, you get like this whole thing, whatever. So I yeah. managed like the bar and the restaurant. And uh, there's no part you like, I for whatever reason, I, I didn't know my way around. So I was parking way far away from the stadium. One day I'm, I'm coming out from the stadium and I'm walking up towards uh, Third and Lakeside. Yeah. And there's like all these what looks like police officers. Yeah. Didn't think anything of it because there's like the Justice Center right yeah. there. And uh and a couple couple of them walk by me and I see their patches and it says Detroit police on it. And I'm like I'd stop when I'm like, What is going on? Like, what yeah. are you doing? And they're like, Oh, we were filming a movie, we're extras. I'm oh like, yeah. So it's like, yeah, that was when I realized like, oh, Cleveland gets a lot of big films. Mm-hmm. Detroit did for like a hot second. Yeah. And then whatever governor, I forget his name, he's a total shitbag. Yeah. Cut the incentive completely. So all that work came down to Cleveland. Yeah. Well, it was Kasich that did the, um, he made that deal to where I, I'm definitely not, I don't know anything about this, but it's, it seemed as though he made the deal that, you know, it was like a lot of like, um, I think, I think what happened Please leave it in the comments if anyone knows. But, like, you know, they started filming a lot of big movies in Ohio and Cleveland specifically and stuff like that. But then it's like a lot of local or like a lot of smaller artists stopped coming to Cleveland because it seemed like they raised the taxes on people on like smaller things, but then lessen the taxes on like those bigger name movies and oh. stuff. So I think that's why they started coming in. And then a lot of the other artists stopped coming. Oh, and, you know, okay. that's why people are like, oh, these people go on tour and they never come to Cleveland. Well, I think I think it's because of the tax thing. Maybe, I don't know. That I don't know. I don't I know, know. I know the but, tax incentive for film is a big deal. Yeah. Bringing Hollywood up, you know. Right, movies. right, right, right. Yeah, I'm not sure about the. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So, OK, so this white noise thing. So I, I'd like to hear more what, what, what you, you did on that. Like, uh, so I was hired as a location PA, which is. Yeah. Like, bottom rung of that any pa job you're pretty much bottom rung that's where okay. you start and what is it exactly are you doing uh, you're a production assistant so in locations you're hauling garbage you're unclogging toilets oh is that right you know, you know stuff like that you're doing grunt work okay which, all good man like i grew up doing grunt work so. sure no you guys are somewhere yeah but no i i thought you, know, you can kind of like throw in like if they were like looking for hey i know this spot you know whatever you couldn't oh that, <laughs> yeah i mean you know you can throw out your ideas nobody's listening. nobody cares you're there they want it to be their board. idea pretty much yeah yeah right right <laughs> yeah you're yeah. there to do a job and fill a void and oh, okay i got organize you organize the truck and you know and what'd you learn on that? <clears throat> I learned, uh, quite honestly, I learned a lot. Yeah. I didn't learn as much as I was hoping just because we were so busy. That shoot was insane. Yeah. Uh, and Netflix was just throwing money hand over fist. And it being my first real big money job, like, I didn't know what to expect. Yeah. So, yeah, it was just like, if there was a problem, it was just like, okay, just throw money at it. Make it go away. Right, right. That's not typically how it works. You yeah. Know, people are a little more reserved with those budgets, but Netflix was just. Well, rah. so, so I, you know, because I remember when I was talking to one of the directors um, and he was saying, or I don't know if it was a director, it was somebody actually, one of the, one of the, some of the, they were involved with next Netflix and, and they basically, you know, we were having a conversation. I'm glad I don't know their name because I don't want to put it out there because I think this is like this other stuff. But they were saying like Netflix is just putting all this money and they're just creating a ton of content where because they they feel that this is before Disney and all these other, you know, streaming services. And they knew all these other streaming services were going to come out. Mm -hmm. So it was like they were just like trying to put tons and tons of content. Didn't care if it was good or not. Yeah. 
you know and, and it was just and that's how he felt you know as, yeah you absolutely know. and quite honestly <clears throat> white noise was supposed to be uh no bumbach who directed that had directed yeah. like uh, marriage story before that with adam driver yeah um he had done a few things where like netflix gave him like kylo like, run no kylo- <laughs> 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 they gave him like this insane like movie deal as yeah. a director like you work for netflix now and here's your blah 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 yeah the the starting budget and i know i'm gonna get these numbers wrong yeah but the starting budget on white noise was supposed to be somewhere around like 60 or 70 million Okay. Pretty good. Yeah. He went over budget by, uh, I think it was like the end number was like 120 or 150. I mean, you always hear these stories though. It seems common, right? You have people go over budget by all this stuff and post production. They got to crazy. Is it crazy? Though, for a streaming, yeah. like a streaming yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, service. So he doesn't work know. anymore. Uh, I'm pretty sure they <laughs> nixed his deal after White Noise. I, again, I could get all these facts yeah. wrong. Well, you're like, there to be the director to meet the requirements and the uh, yeah, right. Just hand over fist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, not once was ever like denied a spending request. <laughs> but so I mean, White Noise was cool though. Yeah, again, it taught me a lot about the business. Yeah, first time I'd been on like an actual film set. Right. Um. I'm forever grateful to Bill Garvey for giving me that job. That's awesome. He believed in me for doing that. And then uh, it went into, I think it was Shooting Stars, which is the LeBron James movie that's coming out uh, first week of June. I oh, is it really? Oh, okay. Like Peacock or okay. uh, HBO Max, one of those. Nice. Um, also shot uh, entirely in, in Cleveland. and Sweet. Yeah. Uh, Wendell Hinkle gave me that job. Okay. Wendell's the man. Yeah. Wendell is the location <laughs> manager. That okay. guy. Yeah. Smooth as silk, that guy. Nice. <laughs> well, I would imagine. I mean, you, you're such a great personality. You know, I, I can't imagine. Yeah, you're probably just going to keep progressing in that way, it's, I would imagine. Yeah, you know? I'm not going to lie to you. Like, I'm leaning more towards post-production at this point. Yeah. Um. Yeah, there were a couple of jobs that soured me a little bit. Right. And uh, <clears throat> I don't know. I, I'm starting to question what people do on set, uh, uh, how we're treating uh, the 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 neighborhoods and the, the homeowners and the business owners. Oh, is that right? Allowing us. Yeah. And like, I probably shouldn't be saying this, but I don't give yeah, a shit. Yeah. Like, quite honestly. <laughs> I like, can cut out whatever you want. No, yeah. <laughs> you can keep this in, actually. Like, okay. You know, there's there's a right way and a wrong way to do things, and yeah. you know, certain people do the wrong thing that that leave a bad taste in a lot of people's mouth in this city. Really, which I don't appreciate. Like, if you part of it is on the locations team, and like I worked a job where I was in charge of that, and uh, I didn't know enough. I was out of my element, but okay, seeing how you know homeowners and business owners can be taken advantage of. Like, I don't appreciate that. Like, that's what I, I don't like about the film industry. Right, right. Yeah, you get, yeah. There's always somebody, you know, I mean, there's always somebody that has to crack the eggs, right, to make the omelet, yeah, right, I guess, right. you know. And I guess, yeah, and should it be, I mean, yeah, it's it's a rough thing, you know. But, yeah, I, I get what you're saying because even just, like, moving up, just any company in general and getting into corporate, what you, you just find like a bunch of people that are just like, don't really care about anything, but like just, I guess their own personal gain or yep. just making something. I, I don't know. Yeah. So, okay. It seems like that's what you're saying in some way. Yeah. That's kind of why like, I don't know. I, I would lean more towards post because I've always felt like screenwriting, you you know, your first hands on it. And uh, when you're the editor, last hands on it. Right. right? You're the last one. You're the last director. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> that to me is a little more appealing. Well, yeah, and just I, one of the main reasons why I do this stuff is because I really love working with, like, Premiere Pro. And yeah. I, I really like editing, you know, if you watch some of these things on it. Like I don't really I these. Can't wait to go watch yeah, it. well, well, these these podcasts I don't really edit too much. I'll I like edit like the first couple minutes just to grab attention sure, or something, sure. and then I just I don't like to edit anything. I just I tell people I tell people I'm like that was like a Bob semi or something. Going. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, and then you know I 
I just like to let it be whatever it is, this conversation stuff. But like I'll do things where I'm like making like paprikash or something like that, you know, and it's just like oh, that's cool. film the, you know, and just putting all those pieces together. Just I just really it. like it. Yeah. I have a friend that does yoga videos, you know, or during the pandemic, she couldn't do the classes. So the the place she worked at, they were just doing their videos like online, you know, whatever. So she she's like, I don't know how to do this stuff. So she would come over here and I showed her how to use Premiere Pro and she started really getting into it and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's just I, I don't know. It's just soothing. It's like one of those like artistic things where it's like playing music, which we're going to get into, you know, and, and just. You know, it's it's something. It's it's like a you know, people talk about being in the zone or doing whatever. It's it's definitely, and I think you know, um, you know, when you're uh, you know you're meditating or whatever. You know what I mean? I think that is meditation. You know, when you kind of get lost in the creative, yeah. you know, uh, you know, expression of things. And I think that is the expression. So yeah, I think a lot about editing. Um, in, in movies, because, you know, I, I've always said like with pictures, I've always been in art and stuff like that. I'm like, you know, I always said I can take, I can take any picture because I think people take a picture of what they see, but they don't, they, so they'll take a picture of it. It's cool. But then there's all this stuff on the outside and it's like somebody else that looks at that picture doesn't see what that person was seeing, but they see it because they know what they're looking at. Right. I said, I can always crop any picture and make it artistic. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's the same thing yeah, as true. editing. You know what oh, I mean? Absolutely. You know, and it's like you could just take this piece of garbage, really, and you could edit it to make it amazing. And I think I, I'm with you. I agree. Yeah. And that was, I think, in, in at CSU. Yeah. That was one of the, like, more of the fun experiences is, you know, you get all this stock footage. Yeah. Go tell the story. Right. There's no direction. You get the stock footage. You got to yeah. watch it all and then put something together. Right put that in front of 10 different people, you're going to get 10 different stories. That's right. Yep. Yeah. Well, you saw that, I mean, in a popular way, you saw that with the whole Zack Snyder cut of the justice league, you know, it was the oh, same movie. Oh uh, yeah. Well, it was like four hours long or whatever, but oh. <laughs> so he had to step off the movie and then I don't know what some other, some other major director came in and finish it. It was around Howard or somebody, I don't know, mm. but uh, it was like, you watch those two movies and they're just edited differently and they look completely they're it's a completely different story. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's yeah, crazy. Wild. Yeah, so I I'm with you on that. I, yeah, like just the same way like I I was like you, you take a picture, I'll just edit it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and you're going to see something different than what I see. Right. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That is really cool. So have you been pursuing that at all or I mean, are you editing anything? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, more and more every day nice yeah. nice um off camera i'm gonna have to pick your brain about like some premiere stuff you know sure, man. <laughs> yeah absolutely please okay I, I feel like that's the other thing in in <clears throat> this community like yeah. sharing knowledge only helps everyone everybody everybody well that's the whole idea of this i live this. on youtube tutorials I swear oh to God. well yeah like, i mean how could you i fixed every appliance in my house with a youtube video <laughs> <laughs> you know? yep. i'm not even kidding you know and no and just it, this is the reason why i really enjoy this podcast is because um it's just focusing on cleveland obviously i'm not looking for a you know six million views because i mean we don't have six million people living in cleveland you know what i mean but hey if if somebody's ever going to come visit Cleveland and they come across this, they're going to get some really good, interesting things. Oh yeah. And I think just documenting and uh, sharing information, I think is just, uh, it's essential. Don't really care about the views. Don't really care about anything, you know, whatever. I just think it's just, in, it, it's really cool to get those stories out there and share, you right. know, and, and work as a community together. Yeah. Um, so if you don't mind, could we shift gears to uh, your music? Sure. Uh, wh- how'd you get into music and what do you play? So I play drums, guitar, bass. Oh, I like I, you're a man singing, of all things. But, <laughs> you know. Uh, singing is not as easy. I, 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 I've, definitely, uh, I've definitely been in bands. I, I play guitar, play bass. Um, I have a drum kit downstairs. That, nice. Yeah, but... It's just there for other drummers to come down and jam yeah, out, sure, or whatever, sure. you know. But uh, <laughs> you know, 
Um, the singing thing, I, I've gotten better over the years, you know, just, but, uh, yeah, that is, you know, placing your fingers on a fretboard is a lot easier than like, uh, you know, singing you know, the, the uh, vocal cords and body. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. You're not wrong. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what my, my dad, uh, grew up playing bands in bands yeah. and, uh, anything notable or just <laughs> kind of just, just local stuff. Yeah. In Detroit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, same with my uncle, uh, John. He was in a couple of jazz bands. He did play Carnegie uh, once or twice. Okay. Um, played in a band called Off White Larry. That was okay. Cool. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, yeah, so I just picked up drums from, you know, those two. And uh, I got an older brother named Justin, and he played guitar. So he showed me a bunch, and we would play, you know, just messing around on dad's equipment downstairs yeah His band would practice at our place yeah so when they weren't there we could mess around with the the guitars and the drums and the keyboards that's and, sweet you know, just you know it's fun fiddle. it was like a play playground down there so did you have a band in detroit that you oh you yeah playing? yeah we i had a band called she said yes that okay was <clears throat> mediocre and uh then i played in a band called mother of stone which was cool i played drums for that Okay. Um, and they were kind of more like a deep purple, um, very 70s. Uh, nice. You know, Uriah Heap sort of thing. Sweet. Yeah, it was cool. It was that fun. is cool, yeah. One of the funner ones. And yeah. Then, uh, me and the bass player from She Said Yes broke off and created Nurse Ratchet, which was like, you know, death metal. Okay. Uh, grindcore. Which is also now a Netflix. Yes, show. yeah. yeah. <laughs> still haven't seen it. Still not seen it, and it's a lot of fun now because all of our we haven't played in years. Yeah. But all of a sudden, when that show came out, all of a sudden our Facebook page started lighting up. Oh, that is so cool. People are trying to tag the show, and they were right. tagging us. Instead. That is so cool. Yeah. I'm like, oh, weird. It's <laughs> like serendipitous. Should we like do a reunion? <laughs> Nice, yeah, and that's what you got into that. That was yeah, pretty, man. Yeah. Like rode that train for a while. Yeah, a lot of fun. So, and then what? What brought you to uh, Cleveland? It was just you, you, 2008. Uh, honestly, like the the housing crash affected yeah. everybody in one way or the other, and uh, I wound up losing my job. Yeah, first time I'd ever lost my job, and I came from a blue collar family, yeah. so like, yeah. kind of took it hard. Had an opportunity to uh, move down here, so I took it. Okay, went and to school and enrolled in school. Got a job in uh, with the Browns for one. Oh, season. Oh, nice. And, yeah, yeah, right there. These guys right here, bunch of losers. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. No. <laughs> well, I mean, oh, I thought I'd stall my line shirt. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, so you're not a Browns fan? <laughs> no, I mean I support them only because. Different here, here. division, yeah. You know, different conference. Oh, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Not, well, I, I think we're kind of in the same boat, though. Same boat. Yeah. yeah. Different conference, different division. Same yeah. Boat. Both, just both suck. I'm a lot of you, though. Those <laughs> lines are looking pretty good this year. Okay. Well, Let's you know what? So are the Browns, yeah, and then well, you know how that usually goes. Yeah, right. Still got to deal with that Watson <laughs> character. I don't know. That's a whole well, other podcast. You know, well, the thing is, you know, I'm going to I'm gonna go there. You know, this Watson guy. You know, all right. So we had a guy that brought us to the uh, the playoffs, sure. and we won. Mm-hmm. And we won a game in the playoffs. And then we got a guy. Sure, he came in halfway through the season, but we had a winning season when he came in. And he didn't bring us to the playoffs. So you went you went from a guy that brought us to the playoffs to get this guy that you're paying the most ever, right, that doesn't take you to the playoffs. So he better win the super bowl this year it's tough. Oh, <laughs> wow those are some lofty expectations or at least a championship because i mean you're looking at a guy that hasn't played for two years you yeah. know you don't get better by not playing i don't know how he's going to make it through this season <laughs> i mean luckily i'm pretty sure the browns drafted an offensive lineman they're not lacking up front but whoa and uh if, yeah. I'm, not, if I'm not mistaken didn't they ship cream hunt yeah. Yeah, they, they shipped yeah. him out of town. And, not that he was, like, the biggest blocker in the world, but. No. Uh, yeah, to your point, uh, history shows you don't play for a year, year and a half. Uh, I don't care how much training you have in the gym. Like, 
you're not field ready. Well, I mean, it's just seeing what they did with uh, Kaepernick. It's like, oh, he didn't play for a year. He's done. And it's yeah, like, okay, well, well now you got this guy. <laughs> now you got this guy that hasn't played for two years, and you pay him the most anyone's ever made. Mm-hmm. And oh yeah, oh he's gonna be great. Yeah. What? Why? How does that work? Yeah, the logic right. has to match up. <laughs> Ugh, it's the weirdest, weirdest. <laughs> okay, so move ever. so you came, so you came to Cleveland. So and then you you ended up getting a job at ABC. Yeah, well, uh, worked at the Browns for a little bit, and then uh, my company got outbid, so okay. we got shipped, and uh, I actually started working at Loop in uh, Tremont. Okay, which was a lot of fun. Uh, nice, because I worked at uh, Harmony House back in Berkeley, just out of high school. Okay, it was a chain of record stores in Michigan, legendary chain of record okay. stores, kind of like Peaches. Okay. Um, that these young people don't know peaches, man. Yeah, I know, know right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah, so I worked at Tremont uh Loop for a little bit and then um that started to get pretty old after, I don't know, two or three years and uh, my buddy Matt Rollin, uh, who's a phenomenal guitar player. Yeah, lives in uh Columbus. I think he still lives in Columbus. Okay. Uh him and his uh, wife Jen. They make uh, if anybody can ever check out uh, Rollins uh, Powers Duo online, they're great. Yeah, unbelievable. Is that like W or R A W L I N? It's R O L I N. Oh, okay, okay. Um, but he worked at ABC at the time, and I'm like, hey, what do I got to do to get in there? He's yeah, like, just go see, you know, Megan, who was the manager at the time. Yeah, uh, and she gave me the job on the spot. So nice. That was it, and then. About eight years later, I was <laughs> yeah. So, so you you were there for eight years. Um, it was about seven or eight years. Okay, six, eight years. Yeah, because I was gonna say, you know, every time I went in there, you were in there, and you yeah. know, it was just like it. You know, obviously the time and everything. You know, and I remember like God. You know, I don't know. It beards became cool. You know, at some point right there. You know, <laughs> in the aughts somewhere. Right. Right. And. Um, no, and ABC was such a cool place. I remember the first day I worked at the Ritz Carlton. It was the first day the owner of ABC came in, and he was doing something with uh, some, yeah, you know, Good Morning America or something like okay. that. And like you know the was that legit. Randy or I don't. I don't. Know, I don't know names. You know, but um, um, older gentleman. You know, he okay. said he, he was the owner, and they did like an interview with him. They were talking about the atomic dog. <laughs> oh, so uh, yeah, Randy. yeah, yeah. So, um, and just going in there, I mean, the, you know, ABC has been there even before, like, you know, can we say the gentr- gentrification thing oh, yeah. happened? Yeah, you know, were, ABC was there. Uh, the original building was across the street, uh, somewhere around where like that sidebar of Nano. Yeah. Um, if I, if I'm remembering correctly, it was long before I was ever here. But yeah. back when, like everybody told me, it was when Ohio City was a war zone. There yeah. Was nothing down there. Well, it was you know you can well no there were prostitutes. And, well, you yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, man. So they were down there, and then uh, the uh, George, the original owner, moved it across the street into the building it is yeah. right now. The kitchen area was his office, and unfortunately, two dudes came in to rob him and wound up shooting him. Like, oh, one guy oh. came through the front, from what I understand. <clears throat> Dude comes in through the front, tries to hold him up. George pulls a gun on him from the office, and a guy came in through the back door and just got him. Oh, no. Yeah, so. Uh, Did it kill him? Or? I, yeah. Oh, I no. Understand. Allegedly, wow. his ghost is still in the building. Oh. Take that for his part. Right, Take yeah, it. yeah. And then uh, Mike Roman bought the place, and then uh, the current owners, uh, Randy and Linda Sirik, uh, took it over from Mike. Okay, all right, yeah, because um, you know that it's like, it. I think it's a unique spot on um, on that strip, just because everything else is like new and trendy and whatever, and that kind of just has that like old punk rock kind of you know feel to it whatever the dive bar of ohio yeah, City. yeah yeah it's really cool that that still kind of survives yeah um you know just going in there and just 
like you can, you know, you go into a place like town hall and it's like, you know, a bunch of early 20 year old girls, you know, dressed in short skirts and whatever. And then you go into ABC and it's like a completely different uh, crowd. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're not wrong. It's a weird uh, dichotomy. On yeah. Show, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So, so how was that work in there? I mean, you know, class. yeah. I'll never go back. Yeah. I'll offend Zach, but like, yeah. N- yeah. I'd love, I would love to. I just, yeah. Those days are uh, long gone. Well, for me too. I mean, you know, you start getting a little older and, you know, like I said, I just had some surgery issues yeah, probably man. from standing I mean, on my feet and stuff like that, <laughs> you know, uh, among other things. But I mean, yeah, it, it you know, it's good money. Um, and it's awesome meeting people and this and that. I mean, I, I really didn't like at a place like you were at, like, you know, cause I worked on in the flats too. And it was, um, just, you know, there's, there's a, a tipping point where after 11 o'clock it just gets fucking crazy and I hate it. Yeah. It's the yeah. stupidity of man that, that comes out <laughs> in the worst times. And I feel like it was always after midnight. At yeah. 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 <laughs> well, I said the same thing over at uh, the Ritz Carlton. I was like, there's no way we should be open after midnight because no. nothing good happens. No. You know, nothing there, you know, mm-hmm. tips drastically decline and you, the risk of getting some angry person yelling at you or whatever, it just increases exponentially, you know, after, after midnight to two o'clock, you know? And yeah, it's it just, like I said, the money is great. I mean, I probably made more money than I ever have, you know, bartending, you know, fun. you know, but, um, you know, it's just ugh, not something I'm into yeah. now. So, yeah. So you, you're just strictly film now and you're, you're not, yeah, you know, yeah, that's, it. that's, it. that's cool, man. So you, onward and upwards. Yeah. So you, you were, uh, and, and the, you're basically just freelance. Yeah. Right now. I mean, you know, I'm part of, uh, IATI. Um, which is the local, um, but yeah, I mean, you know, oh, so it's, it's like a, a union it's a gig player. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Everybody in the union's a gig player. Nice. Yeah. That is so cool. Yeah, no. Man. Yeah. I'm like I said, man, we got to talk a, uh, a little bit more, uh, off camera about yeah, we some might of have that. To do, uh, <laughs> yeah, we might have to do part two. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm done. This was fun. Uh, yeah, dude, dude. Thank you so much dude, for coming thank by. You, man. Yeah. I appreciate it. This yeah. is awesome. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. I love this setup. Like, oh, keep okay. it going. I yeah. know you, I know you you dealing with the hip, but like, keep yeah. it going, man. This is cool. No, is yeah, too cool not to keep doing because nobody's doing this. Kevin Naughton did it. I helped Kevin Naughton do this kind of sort of thing uh, when he was working for Pressure Life magazine. Okay. Uh, oh yeah I, yeah. I think they abandoned this years ago. Yeah. You're the only one doing it. Well, you know there there are a couple other people doing this. Um, you now, I think I started it. Yeah, you know, I started this probably about three years ago. Yeah, uh, I think there's a couple other people that started this now. And when I did it, there nobody was doing it. You know, and I was like, come on, man. You know, and just working downtown and meeting people and knowing yeah. being in bands and this and that, whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, I just there's so many things. Why why isn't anyone anyone bringing this stuff together? You know, what I mean, so it's like we need a subculture Cleveland wow. thing. So sub CLA. So, but yeah, but Keep dude. Going. Keep yeah, going. and and you you you're definitely been on my radar a long time, man. And I'm it, glad man. you this finally made it down. I'm glad too, man. Yeah, Let's yeah. do it again. Cool, definitely. <laughs> All right, man. Sub CLE, we're out.